Hey YouTube, welcome back to Super Lurkana World. It is your one-stop shop for everything Lurkana, and we're at the final color, the final ink of Ursula's Return. We're reviewing Ruby today. Let's just get right into the video. Let me know what your favorite Ruby card is. And at the end of this video, too, let me know what your favorite ink is in the set and why. And of course, please like and subscribe. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. We got the Snuggly Duckling, a disreputable pub. Whenever a character with fear attack or more challenges another character while here, Gain a lore. Oops. Um, if the challenging character has six type of gain three lore instead. It's really not that bad. Like, it's a two lore, two moves, nine toughness location. That's going to probably get you some lore. Or force your opponent to use removal on it. That's not challenge based. Like, it's uh, it's okay. It's an okay card. Sisu. Eight tough, eight, sorry, eight uninkable, five foil quest for three, shift six. And whenever you play this character, banish all those characters to a two attacker less. Two attacker less. Uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. If the format is filled with cards with two attacker less, this card is great. If not, it's uh, terrible. Uh, a card like this can't be judged as in the right now. So it's like right now, it's not amazing. Like, you'll, you'll play it. I want a couple copies of it and hope it gets off a little bit, but like it's not that great. If we ever get a, a big heavy aggro meta with cheap characters, this card becomes a lot better. Uh, Rhea. This is a three drop inkable 3-3 three, three the quest for one. When this character challenges another character, gain a lore for each other damage character in play. This card is crazy. Like the extra lore this card gets you for like no no effort whatsoever is insane. Just have some damaged characters on board, you get some lore. Uh, as long as this one's on the damage character. This gets you free lore. It's pretty good. Honestly, we have training grounds. One drop inkable location. One move five toughness. No, no uh, lore, but you pay an ink and chosen character's plus one attack this turn. What's interesting about this location is that it's not once per turn. So, like, if you really want to, you could sink all your ink to get the right magic numbers you need on any characters at that location. It's nifty. I've tried it. It lets you hit magic numbers, which is what's really cool. Uh, and you're 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 not upset that this card is not getting you any lore. Basically, what you're doing is you're making sure you have the right numbers so that the cards that actually get you lore, get you lore, right? That makes any sense. So, uh, we'll do it up. This card's okay. The Plank. Three drop item, uninkable. You pay two and banish it. Choose one. Banish chosen hero character or ready chosen villain character. They can't quest for us this turn. I love items like this. So, like, if you're playing Ruby Villains... You're playing this card as a four of probably because you're playing Ruby Villains. But it has an extra benefit already on top of that to banish a hero. So like if there's if, there, if there's a really annoying hero on the board, you just kill it. That's that's cool. And that's and that's really nice design. Where like the like one effect is something you can build a deck around, which is nice. And the other effect is just a payoff, like a bonus, which is really cool. Tong, four drop uninkable. 3-6. Reckless. Not that good. Sisu. I, that's okay, but like, no. 3-drop uh, Sisu, a person. Uh, uninkable. One of the quest for one evasive. And we play this character. Banish chosen character with one type or less. Again. Unless our meta is filled with one drops, like one attack bodies, not that good. Noi. 4-drop inkable 4-4 four, four the quest for one. Whenever you play an action, this character takes no damage from challenges this turn. This is not hard to do. And this is a great card in your Ruby decks that ready your characters. Basically, you play an action, and then you have cards that ready Noi over and over again. You start you're just beating you're beating things without taking any damage. Card's really cool. It's a nice card. Uh, Nessus six drop inkable seven five the quest for two. Not that good. We have Mulan one drop two three the quest for one. It enters with two damage. It's, it's funny. Um, it, funny enough, it combos with. Uh, Raya, and I've seen this, where like you have a Raya on board, you play a couple Mulans, and then all of a sudden you get two extra lore for swinging. Like it's really funny, but then it can shift into this Mulan, this one, the six drop inkable two six that quest for two with shift five, and when we play this character, if you have you shift a player, it gets plus three attack this turn, and then during your turn when this character deals damage to another character in challenge, deal the same amount of damage to choose two other chosen characters. So basically, you get a three for one. You do when you the turn you play, you challenge something, you uh, deal five damage to it, and then you do five damage to other things. And it's not once per turn either. So if you have a card that can ready it and you can attack again, while well, you're spreading a, a, a poop ton of damage, 
in one turn. Uh, this is really only good the turn you play it. After that, it's kind of whatever. Um, but it will break boards. Say so the card's okay. Uh, Li Shang, 1, 2, 2 for 1 is your generic vanilla. Okay. Flynn Rider, 2 drop inkable, 2, 2 the quest for 1. At the start of your turn, if you have a character in play with a more attack than each chosen character, gain 3 lore. This is fun. This is a fun card. It actually combos really well with uh, Training Grounds. Like, you, you pump, 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 and then you play this, and you gain 3 lore for nothing. It, it's really, really cool. Uh, Beast is a 3-drop, 2-6, that quest for 2, enters play with 4 damage. Uh, again, combos really well with Rhea, uh, and that's the extent of that. Goofy, 4-drop, 2-4, quest for 1, with Rush, and whenever this character channels another character, you gain 2 lore. This card's really good. Um, it, it's strong. It's just, it's just weak. Right, but it can do it the turn it comes into play. Maybe knock a few a body or two away, gain a few lore in the process. Uh, it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we got Hercules, a five drop uninkable seven three with Rush Reckless. Uh, Maui's better because it, it, this has no no toughness. But like it's it, if you really need that seven, like let's say we get into a meta where seven is a magic number, then Hercules becomes a little bit better. But besides that, no, I don't think so. Uh, Pegasus, we have a 2 3 1 1 evasive. Cool. Uh, not that good. So, let's see what we did. Tuck Tuck. I like Tuck Tuck. I like this card a lot. There's a 3 drop inkable 2 3 request for 1 with evasive. We play this character, you may move him and one of your other characters to the same location for free. The other character gets plus 2 attack this turn. There are really cool combos in your location matter ruby decks. Uh, that you can move to get big damage, and then you're just doing all sorts of obnoxious stuff with what your attacks. Even something like freaking Goofy would would do well with, or Mulan would do well with, just just right here. But think about all the other good Ruby cards, or, or like Noi. <laughs> Why not? Give it more power. Why not? Uh, the card's fine. I like it a lot. Uh, Lumiere two 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 for one. Your other character is plus one attack. This ain't bad. It's not a bad card in your Ruby attacking decks. Like, just take an extra attack boost, you know, spread. Why not? Uh, Namari, 3 drop 1 equal 3 to be for 1. During your turn, whenever this character deals damage to another character in a challenge, you may deal the same amount of damage to another trusted character. It's like a, uh, it's like a mini Mulan. It's not going to be playable, really. We have a Rhea, 4 drop inkable, uh, 3 to cost for 2. We play this character, Rhea, chosen character of yours at a location, can't quest for the rest of this turn. It's a little bit expensive for what it is, I'm going to be real with you, but it's not a bad body. You might play it in a Locations Matter Ruby aggro deck, but that's that's about it. That's a tall order, but it, it you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, medallion Weights. I love this item. Two drop inkable item. You exert pay two. Chosen character gets plus two attack this turn. Whenever, this, whenever they challenge another character this turn, you may draw a card. It just gets you free draw, basically, for two two mana ah, that's a great card and if you do it multiple times then you draw multiple cards this card's great uh vitalosphere one drop inkable you item you pay one banish chosen characters rush and plus two attack this turn I i'm a big fan of this card in the sense that it's a surprise button basically but that's it that's that's as high it goes. You basically hold this card in your hand till you're ready. You have a one turn big wombo with attacks, and that's about it. The card's fine. Benja four five three quest for one nothing there. Imperial Pro Proclamation one drop inkable item. Whenever one of your characters challenges another character, you may pay one less for the next character you play this turn. It's a cool little stacking ability, um, but that's uh, that's about it. It's, it's fine. Uh, Pirate's Life six drop inkable sing together. Each opponent loses two lore, you gain two lore. Uh, cool multiplayer, really bad anywhere else. Khan, two, three, two for one, nothing crazy. Sisu, another one. We have here uh, a three drop inkable, one for the quest for two, gets plus one attack for each card in opponent's hand. This card gets pretty crazy. Um, it, it, it can always be big, which is really fun. Um, yeah, you'll play this card. People will play this card, because it's, 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 it's just always big. Especially if you play things like Whole New World. And then it's always, always big. Uh, B King Undisputed. Four drop uninkable song. Each opponent chooses and banishes one of their characters. Really good if your opponent is playing a tower deck with like a very big creature or whatever. 
Otherwise, not that really good. Unless you can remove the rest of their board first. And then this is basically a free um, free uh, kill. Because it's a song. Good card. Li Shang. Three drop. Three two quest for one or shift discard a character. Your other character... Your characters with four attack or more get plus one lore. The card is decent. Uh, because it's very easy to get characters with a four attack or more. So that gets a payoff in that sense. Uh, this card is pretty good. It's okay. Uh, Brawl. 3-drop, Inkable, Banish Trolling Character with 2 attack or less. Uh, cards, the card is okay. Uh, it'll see play. It's a removal card for cheap. And it's Inkable. Alright, Hercules. 3-drop, Uninkable, 3-3 three, three quest for 1, Rush. Not that crazy. Fazu. We have 2-drop, uh, 0-4, quest for 1 with a cannot challenge and exert to ready chosen character named Mulan. They can't quest for us this turn. If you're playing Mulan Turbo, sure, this card's great. Otherwise, no. No, you're not. Um, Mulan, two, one, three, one. When you play the action, this character gets plus two attack this turn. Uh, what's really cool about this is if you play an action, then you shift, the attack carries over to the big Mulan, I believe. So it, it just, it becomes even scarier. It's pretty cool. Um, finally, that's it. Oh, that's it. Wow, okay. So yeah, Ruby has a lot of good cards uh, in this set. It's got the Snuggly Duckling I like. It's got the the Bee King, the Li Shang, the Brawl, the Sisu. Those are all good cards. We got the Proclamation, the Weights, the Fatalisphere, the, the Tuck Tuck, the Lumiere, the Sisu, the Goofy, the Flynn Rider. The, you know, I'm not a big fan of Mulan. It's, it's okay, but like it's fine. Noi is cool. The Plank is cool. Training Grounds is fine. Ray is great. So many good Ruby cards. A lot of good Ruby cards. I'm not super surprised that Ruby Sapphire is doing really well in this format. But anyway, um, that's it. That's the entire Ursula's Return review now. What do you guys think about the set in general? Let me know in the comments. Do you think this set is crazier than previous sets? Do you think Power Creep is happening? Let me know in the comments. I will see you later. Bye.